Hi friends, <laughs> today we're going to be talking about a pretty awesome saint, and it is Saint Rose of Lima. So a little bit about her, um, she was born in Lima, Peru in 1586 to Spanish colonists, and she was named Isabel Flores de Olivia. And ever since she was a baby, everyone looked to her with great beauty. She was really beautiful, she was born with just great beauty. So ever since she was young, she was given the nickname Rose. And it just kind of stuck with her. It's why we know her as St. Rose. And her beauty kind of grew with her as she grew. But we'll get more into that later. A little bit more about her story. Um, she became the first canonized saint of the Western Hemisphere. Uh, and was a Dominican lay tertiary who basically worked during that time just to evangelize the Indians. Um, and so a little bit more into her basic story. From an early age, St. Rose one knew she wanted to become a nun. Uh, really, ever since she was five years old, um, she prayed and fasted in secrecy just because she didn't want her family to know that she was doing this. Um, she performed secret penances, uh, a lot of which were really painful and severe. And she performed daily adoration of the Blessed Sacrament and even took in daily communion. And she really had a great devotion to St. Catherine of Siena, which is really cool. Um, and St. Rose even herself had the invisible stigmata. Uh, similar to St. Catherine of Siena. Um, and then now going back to the beauty aspect of her, um, it became really difficult when she became a young woman. Um, it really became to attract suitors. Uh, people were really attracted to her, wanted to try to marry her. And this kind of became a problem for her because she really wanted to take a vow of chastity. And her family didn't want her to do that. Um, her family wanted her to marry. And she just didn't want to. She wanted to spend the rest of her life uh, dedicated to Jesus. So she um, took peppers and she put it against her skin so that it would uh, blister up her skin. And then she cut her hair short just so these suitors would find her unattractive and wouldn't try to marry her anymore. Um, and of course her parents kind of got really angry at that. Um, they really opposed of her vow of chastity, and this kind of uh, resulted in a fight because her parents really wanted her to marry. But after a little bit, her father eventually um, caved in and gave her a room to herself so she could continue to spend her life in prayer. And that's exactly what she did. Um, she spent around two hours a night sleeping <laughs> because the rest of the time she wanted to spend in prayer. So she barely got any sleep, um, which kind of adds to all of the stuff that she really did to uh, set up her sufferings for like people who are in trouble. Um, and even like she loved spending her time praying for souls who needed help, but she also loved every time that she wasn't praying or helping out with her family. She would love to take care of like the orphans and care for the elderly. So she was just really a giving person. She had such a servant heart. Um, and it's something we can really take away from her. Um, and uh, when she turned 20, uh, she was finally able to join the Third Order of St. Dominic. And this is where it kind of took off. She became into a life of just extreme prayer, extreme fasting and penance. And on one occasion, she really, uh, she even like burned her hand uh, as, it's, as a self-imposed penance, um, which just keeps going back to the fact that like she was just, she's willing to just do this as a penance just to pray for these souls that are really in need of help. Um, and another thing that she used to do, she used to wear a heavy silver crown with spikes. And a lot of people did say that she would wear a crown of roses, uh, but underneath that would be the spikes. Um, and it was basically just a crown of thorns and she just wanted to be like Jesus in that sense to wear that crown of thorn go through that suffering um, but at one point the one of the spikes became so lodged in her, her skull that it took a lot of force to actually take it out um, so it just kind of shows that she she's, she's not scared to go through this um, that she is she's cap she's capable of doing all of this just to help people uh, but St. Rose died uh, at the age of 31 on August 25th, 1617. Um, and according to a legend, she actually accurately predicted the date of her death, which is pretty cool. <laughs> um, and her feast day is August 23rd, but around the world, uh, 
uh, August 23rd around the world, but in some countries like Peru, uh, they celebrate her on August 30th. So it's just they have their celebration that day. And St. Rose is known for being the patron saint of embroiderers, gardeners, florists, uh, those who ridicule for their piety, and people who suffer from family problems just because this is what she went through um, when she was kind of living her life. And if you pray to her for any of these problems, she'll be there for you. Um, but yeah, I just hope you guys really take away from her story. Uh, just her giving heart, willing that she is able to go through anything to herself, um, to pray for those people who are suffering, and even to help out in her community to those who are suffering. So she just had such a servant heart, and I just pray that you guys take away from her story. And as you go about your day, really... Really think about how you can give back to your community and how you can be a servant of Christ to others. Um, but yeah, and I really hope you guys research more into her as I do wish to research into all these things we talk about. Um, but other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you guys later. Bye!